We want you know, pro-life legislation. We want pro-faith legislation. We want freedom back in the street, you know, in our in our in the streets of America and the pulpits of America and the classrooms of America. Hello everyone. I'm Brandon Lewis, founder of the Tennessee Conservative. Today, Timothy Head, executive director of the Faith and Freedom Coalition, joins us. Tim has played a key role in passing the First Step Act, as well as Fight Online Sex Trafficking Act and the Stop Enabling Sex Trafficking Act. In 2021, the Pro Texana Medal of Service was presented to him by Baylor University. And if I'm not mistaken, he's the first non-public servant to ever receive that award. He has an extensive public presence with over 100 media publications and outlets to his credit, such as Fox News, National Review, Christian Post, Washington Examiner, The Hill, The Jerusalem Post, Newsmax, OEN, and a bunch of liberal outlets that none of you probably watch. Tim has an extensive um, career also in faith um, and working in the faith community. He also worked in public policy as the district director for a member of the Texas congressional delegation. And he has served as the chief of staff and policy advisor to members of the Texas legislature and worked in the Republican Party of Texas's 2010 Victory Texas effort before working in this realm. He was a missionary in Asia, uh, in the Middle East, Europe, and worked on staff at the Antioch Community Church in Waco, Texas. He has been married to his wife, Annie Kate, for over 17 years, and they have two beautiful daughters together. Tim, welcome to the program. Glad you're here. Well, thank you so much, Brandon, for uh, for having me on. But uh, look, I always appreciate uh, folks like you that kind of uh, roll your sleeves up and, and get into uh, to broadcast and media. Uh, this is a, a, a truly a yeoman's work and a, a uh, I think a kingdom calling. So thank you for doing what you do. Well, I never thought I would be a member of the media. And if our Republicans had not closed down our gyms and churches, uh, in Tennessee, they would never be a Tennessee conservative, but sometimes you have to remind people of their constitutional obligations and get back in the fight. So tell me a little bit about the history and the mission of the Faith and Freedom Coalition. What it, for those who do not know, I know you've got two million conservatives strong, but for those who do not know what you do, talk about how the organization was formed and talk about uh, what your primary focus is. Yeah, sure. Uh, so we uh, started in 2009. Uh, so uh, to kind of uh, turn the clock back a little bit, some folks might recognize the name Ralph Reed from the uh, 1990s. There was an organization called the Christian Coalition uh, that he, uh, uh, Pat Robertson, started and Ralph uh, ran the Christian Coalition for, uh, for uh, just shy of a decade. Uh, he left that and, and uh, did some other things for uh, several years. And then in 2009, kind of on the heels of, uh, of the Obama win in 2008, um, uh, he and a number of people uh, kind of saw there were some empirical uh, data suggesting that Christians weren't voting quite as uh, frequently as we needed them to. And so he, uh, 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 he and a handful of uh, friends and colleagues started the, the, the Faith and Freedom Coalition in 2009. I personally came on board in 2014. Uh, as you mentioned, I was working in uh, Republican Party, uh, Texas uh, politics, and the state legislature for a number of years. The way we sometimes say it for faith and freedom is, is our role is to give Christians a voice in government. So, um, you know, if you kind of look across the country, either federal, um, federal kind of congressional policy or in a lot of states, you know, you have a lot of labor unions that are well organized and you have a lot of uh, you know, uh, SEIU or pipe fitters or truckers or, uh, you know, a, a host of other um, uh, professions, if you will, kind of similar, uh, similar viewpoints that are well organized, but, um, but uh, frequently people of faith, especially Christians, um, uh, it's a little bit of a, of a kind of a shotgun or buckshot approach, you know, we just kind of figure, well, at the end of the day, there's a whole bunch of us and they'll just kind of get the message. And, you um, and so Faith and Freedom Coalition started uh, with the, the vision of, of, again, giving that, uh, that, that Christian voice, a voice in government, so federal or, or state. We're in, um, have an office, obviously, in Washington, D.C. It's literally one block off of the Capitol, and then we work in 25 different state capitals. And so issues, we work on our, our uh, obviously, life, uh, marriage and family issues, uh, religious liberty. On the federal side, we do a lot supporting Israel. 
uh, but we also touch on immigration and education, uh, our justice system and, and human trafficking. Uh, as you mentioned in, in that bio, we've been pretty integral in, in finding uh, practical solutions. Another way I, I try to kind of phrase these things or frame them is a biblical worldview within a constitutional framework, right? So, um, so we believe that that uh, it's possible to maybe have a biblical worldview, but but also to argue that the government should do things that really the government might that the church should better be equipped to do, or individual private citizens should do. You know, so we're arguing for that biblical worldview, but also within you know kind of the checks and, and balances of of a constitutional uh, governmental structure that we have here in America. Well, I'm glad you're around um, because Christians are poorly organized when it comes to uh, being involved politically. And often, uh, I think one big reason for that is so many liberal organizations are always getting something uh, from other people at someone else's expense. So they're, they're very motivated to do it, very motivated to lobby. And many Christians, it's like, we would like to keep what we have in religious freedoms, but we don't, we're not proactive. And so we're always trying to play catch up. We're always playing defense when we need to play offense. And I think a lot of our pastors have quit uh, talking about cultural issues uh, like critical race theory and, um, you know, the pushing of the LGBTQ agenda on our children, and they don't do it from the pulpit. And so their congregants don't know how to get involved politically. And if there's not a place for the church in politics, there will not be a place for the church in our nation, which concerns me greatly. Uh, it's one of the big reasons I got into this. Uh, talk a little bit about the Road to Majority event that you just wrapped up in Tennessee. That was a massive event, uh, very successful. Uh, what happened there? And then what type of practical outcomes do you think will come of it? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, so again, we were started in 2009. And uh, in 2010, we did our first uh, national conference. So we call it the Road to Majority. And, um, you know, some people, I think, uh, uh, construe that as meaning like a Republican majority. That's actually not the point. What we actually say uh, that our, 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 the majority that we're on, in process toward is a pro-life, pro-faith, and pro-freedom um, majority. And, uh, and so that, you know, frankly, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't mind more Democrats being a part of a pro-life, pro-faith, pro-family um, uh, majority. So uh, it's, uh, we're, we're, we're actually a nonpartisan organization, but we, we uh, you know, obviously the way the kind of the, the cookie crumbles these days, there are more Republicans that are at least closely aligned with us. Uh, so at the, uh, the conference that we just had in Nashville, uh, we, we've, uh, we, our first 10 conferences were in Washington, D.C., right around the Capitol usually, and we go lobby the Capitol on these issues. And uh, as you might imagine, in the year 2020, um, Washington, D.C. said, sure, you can have a conference, but uh, we, we can only allow you to have about 14 people in a ballroom <laughs> that would normally seat 3,000. So uh, we said, well, well, we might try some other venues. We tried in, uh, in Atlanta, Georgia in 2020. Uh, in 2021, we were in Orlando, Florida, and we decided to kind of keep it on the road, moved to Nashville, just had it. Uh, about a week and a half ago now, you know, uh, uh, June the 16th, 17th, and 18th there at the Gaylord Opryland and um, had, had, you know, in a lot of ways, kind of a who's who. We had about 40 to 45 main stage speakers, and then we had uh, breakout panels on, on a lot of issues. Um, you know, President Trump was, uh, was the one that probably got the most, uh, the most eyeballs. Uh, he spoke on Friday morning. That was June the 17th now. <laughs> Uh, was, uh, our, our crowd was treated to uh, two hours and eight minutes of uh, entertainment uh, from, uh, from former President Trump there. But, uh, but Mike Pompeo uh, sp spoke at our gala, our kind of awards banquet on a Saturday night, and he was great. I think a lot of people have certainly known his name, seen his face on TV or whatever, but um, hadn't spent much time with him. But we had, you know, 1,400 people at a, at a dinner, a, a banquet there, and, and he went for about 40 minutes, and honestly, uh, I, one of the big feedbacks we got was um, we didn't know how genuine his faith is. I mean, he's, he, he was actually a Sunday school teacher um, while he was Secretary of State. He kind of like he and his wife co co taught a Sunday school at their uh, at their church, even uh, while he was literally the Secretary of State. So um, anyway, but uh, you know, Newt Gingrich was with us, and uh, you know, uh, down the line, you know, Marsha Marsha Blackburn and Senator Haggard, Haggerty from there in Tennessee were with us, but uh, Tim Scott and Lindsey Graham and Joni Ernst and on and on. Uh, a lieutenant governor from from North Carolina is a guy named Mark Robinson, which who's uh, starting to get more and more national public 
publicity, uh, who is just a, a pretty profound leader. Uh, uh, I think uh, he was one of the crowd favorites. So the goal for this is uh, is partly to, um, you know, there, it's kind of like a two-way, conferences are like a two-way mirror, you know, so the audience obviously is watching the crowds, uh, but for somebody that works in legislatures, either federal or state legislatures, I'm mindful that that the other the mirror works the other way also, you know, so that it's good for speakers to see audiences, big, energetic, engaged crowds that are saying, we want, you know, pro-life legislation. We want pro-faith legislation. We want freedom back in the street, you know, in our in our in the streets of America and the pulpits of America, in the classrooms of America. So uh, so not only is it good, I think, for a lot of um, you know, we had had a little over 2,000 people that came to the conference. Those people saw those 40-something speakers, but those 40-something speakers saw, you know, here's here's thousands of people that are congregating from not just Nashville, but but about uh, 18 other states. Uh, we had people represented, and they're saying, you know, hey, this the, apparently there's more of an audience here than you know than than the uh, Gallup polls or whatever uh, might uh, might lead you to believe. And then the last piece that I always think is interesting is. Um, because of the crowds and the speakers, media come, and a lot of media we end up talking to and kind of uh, either on record or off record say, you know, uh, indeed, the church is vibrant in America. And just because, um, you know, you and your, wherever you're from, New York or Washington or, you know, your specific uh, bureau, uh, because you don't see a lot of Christians, you know, within five square miles of your front door doesn't mean there aren't literally tens of millions of Christians in America that uh, that are trying to lead biblical lives and, and they may not you know uh be walking the halls of congress every day because they're raising kids and having jobs and coaching baseball and doing normal stuff everybody doesn't live just to march on congress you know so uh so it it, it serves several different uh purposes or functions you could say uh, having a kind of a high uh, a high level uh meeting or gathering like that uh these days well, I'm, I hope to make it to the next one. Could not make it to this one, mainly because of all the stuff I have, as I mentioned to you, moving out of the house. But um, I, I knew a lot of people that went there. They enjoyed it. It was well attended. Uh, of course, you know, when you bring the press, uh, we're outnumbered, I think, 80 to 1 in our own state, uh, liberal media outlets versus conservative media outlets. There's only two. And I run one of them, and we're the only one focused on our state. So uh, one thing I hope a lot of Christians do uh, is get into conservative media. I didn't want to be in the media, but they, they kind of made me get into it. Here at the Tennessee Conservative, guys, we bring you news that no other organization will bring you. We are the only organization that covered anything on social media censorship. We're the only organization that is fighting in any significant way against illegal immigration in our state. We are one of the strongest advocates for school choice. We try our very best to keep Republicans honest on their campaign promises, and we try to fight against the corruption caused by left-leaning corporations in Nashville and the bureaucracy that government has created that works against your interest with taxpayer-funded lobbyists. The only way we can do this, and I kid you not, is with your support. Nobody else is going to do it. If you're waiting on somebody else to be conservative in your stead, that's how we got to the point we are, and that's why we have so few conservative media outlets. So when you go to TennesseeConservativeNews.com slash support, and if you give any amount, we will send you this proud Tennessee conservative bumper sticker. We will also send you this Please don't California my Tennessee bumper sticker, and we will send you a directory, and I hope this thing changes in the primary of all our state Republicans, uh, both at the House and at the Senate level, so that when they try to do shenanigans, you can call them and tell them to stop, and when they try to do good things, you can ask them to go forward. And finally, if you get $50 or more, or a recurring donation of $10 or more, you will get this proud Tennessee conservative tumbler. Now, this Tumbler was made from the melted down sword of Excalibur. It has magical properties. It will imbue you with superpowers. It will correct all of your vitamin uh, deficiencies. It also uh, cures most rheumatoid arthritis. And um, if you were to, to take this and if you were to put all the campaign promises in here that are made on the campaign trail, 
This also has like uh, Wonder Woman's magic lasso. It has the ability to get truth out of people. If you put most Republicans' campaign promises in here, which would fill it up to the very brim, and you close the lids and you wave your hand over it and then you poured it out, you'd get about three drops of conservative policy. That is how magical this tumbler is, and it helps conservative messages and news get out there. Guys, I need your help. Go to TennesseeConservativeNews.com slash support. I'll plainly tell you, last year... We got our taxes back. I put 65 grand into this puppy. So when you say, well, I don't have any money I can't give, I'm going to have to call BS on that. Get in the fight. Give today. TennesseeConservativeNews.com slash support. I can't do it without you. Don't wait for somebody else to do it because it ain't going to get done. Uh, let's talk about action. That's what I'm always trying to get uh, the folks in Tennessee to do, the people that watch uh, my program, that listen to our podcast, et cetera, to take action. Uh, posting on social media is all well and good, and you should probably do a little of it. Uh, but there's a there's a lot of practical things you can do. So what can conservative Christians do that are listening, uh, that are concerned about the direction of their state, of their nation? Uh, what kind of advice would you have to someone who knows we're, we're not moving where we need to be moving? We're moving away from, from God's vision. We're moving away from a biblical worldview. Uh, we're, we're even moving into some places that are very dangerous uh, culturally, uh, and I'd almost say uh, very corrupt uh, in the media, in academia, and in government. Um, what do we do, and and what advice would you have them practically do if you had two or three things that they need to spend time and money on? Uh, what are they? Good question. So, um, you know, one of the ways I, I sometimes kind of talk about elected. Uh, um, so, whether we whether we uh, uh, like it or not, or kind of think of it this way, I, I, I tend to think that America kind of gets the government the government that it deserves for the most part, uh, either by uh, by um, activity or by kind of omission or negligence. And um, and then you know another way that I, I kind of think of it is. Uh, that, uh, that I find that, that almost all elected officials are kind of like actors and they're, they're reading the script that uh, they think that they're being get, they, they actually either are being given or they think they're being given. Sometimes the, the, the script is kind of a, a voided script with a lot of like ad libs in there. You know, like uh, a lot, I think a lot of, uh, of citizens sort of imply what they want their electorate. Well, you, we elected you and you know you so just kind of be you because we elected you um but there's not a lot of like specific instruction given and so i think if we write a, a clearer or a better script um first of all i find that that more elected officials are more likely to kind of act in line with that script and so what that means is is being engaged you know to your point uh, engagement doesn't necessarily mean like posting some meme about like you know, a far side cartoon about, uh, you know, whatever socialism sucks or something like that. It's like you're going to have to actually tell your your state representative, your state senator, your your, uh, you know, your um, school school uh, school board electors. What do you want? Um, and you don't sometimes you have to say it forcefully, but sometimes it's just like they don't hear all they hear is the bad stuff and they never really hear good stuff. And so uh, it does require a little more hands-on approach for citizens. I mean, it would you would love to just be able to kind of like put that the the governmental part in in autopilot or, or uh, you know whatever and just let it kind of go. But but you know as as you well know, one of the the prices of liberty is eternal vigilance. Okay, so uh, that that just kind of needs to be part of our you know at least monthly sort of uh, uh, regiment is is being in contact in some form or, or fashion. Now. Um, I think that uh, you know showing up for sure in uh, in the legislative bodies uh, from time to time is is good. Um, you know, one of the things that we do again at Faith and Freedom is not only do we have big national conferences, but we're we're organized right now in 25 different states. We'll have some large kind of uh, electorate day, and then we you know we have a, a, a lobbyist that's going to that state legislator uh, state legislature talking about again these issues: life, marriage, religious liberty, et cetera. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, certainly um, it doesn't have to be faith and freedom, but but identifying uh, organizations that are like minded and, and are effective. Um, don't, don't don't just kind of like uh, watch watch things on TV and and send an email out saying, uh, you know, yesterday was good or tomorrow is going to be bad. You actually have to like stay engaged. You know, this is this is a contact sport. Right. So um, I, I, I would love to say there's kind of like a, a short 
um, uh, a syn synopsis that you can just kind of do this thing and it'll work. But one of the reasons why why the political left usually is a little more um, effective is because they're there's a lot of surface area that they're in contact with, and um, and and there's there just is no substitute for uh, personal. Uh, engagement, informed engagement, and uh, you know, I, I wish there was an easier way, but uh, but but uh, you know, the the uh, courier pigeon uh, lobbying just doesn't quite uh, carry the the weight of you know Brandon and Tim showing up and sitting down in their elected officials' office and saying, no. "Don't do that anymore, man." <laughs> well, and I I believe we we're going to have a citizens lobbying day in the next uh, legislative session. We are a for profit uh, publication mainly because they they in Tennessee they just recently tried to tinker with four hundred one c fives and threes status and put all these rules on them. That's why I just was a was a for profit publication. But okay. in Tennessee right now, an interesting fact: you talk about lobbying. We spend four uh, left leaning corporations that spend I'd say ninety five percent of the money up in Nashville spend $450,000 per member just lobbying. That's not steak dinners. That's not $250 a bottle of bourbons. And that doesn't count all the PAC money, uh, that what we call PAC welfare. Uh, all our elected representatives in the Republican Party get up there and they get on PAC welfare and they quit raising money back in their district. So the lobbyist comes in and the money comes in and then the constituents that aren't engaged wonder why did this just happen up in Nashville? Well, it, it's the money. It's the money and the time and it's the face time. Yeah. So, yes, I agree. We need to we need to get in our state capitals and we need to get in our nation's capitals so that these people can hear us. Um, you know, you have been very kind with your time. I appreciate the work that you do there. I'm going to let you have the last word. Well, you know, like like I uh, said early, I mean, I I, I really respect and appreciate, uh, you know, kind of normal. I'm I'm a normal citizen. I guess people maybe see a you know a, a, an organization and a brand, and they figure he's some kind of you know I'm just a normal guy. You know, you you decided uh, it's just not going to work anymore, just to kind of like complain and and bellyache from you know, your back porch anymore. Um, that uh, that you decided to kind of roll up your sleeves again and, and get in the get in the game. Um, I think that. Uh, beauty of this is when more and more people um, are first engaged, get engaged, and then secondly, uh, start to learn kind of the inner workings of the process, um, the, the, you know, the, that whole kind of light is the best disinfectant, you know, as, as uh, more of us kind of start to see exactly how the, um, a lot of the, the, the sausage, proverbial sausage gets made, we actually see more and more progress. And so we just saw similar things in the Supreme Court in the last few days. You know, just slowly and surely, uh, if we uh, if we stay engaged, believe, uh, live, you know, live in accordance with uh, with the, the the Lord's edicts and principles, and then ask others to govern in light of those principles. I think that that eventually we can kind of right this ship. And so, uh, so thank you and and uh, for having me and us on. And we uh, we looking forward to uh, working alongside you in Tennessee in the future. Well, I hope you launch a chapter here, and if you do, I'll try to be as helpful. Um, I'm like the Holy Spirit. Wherever two conservatives are gathered in Tennessee, I'm there also. We publicize yeah. everything that's conservative uh, in our state and try to be a clearinghouse for that information because nobody else does it. And so uh, if I can help you, let me know before you leave, uh, how can people learn about your organization, get on your list, so on and so forth? Yeah, you bet. So, uh, so our, our national website is just ffcoalition.com. So Faith and Freedom Coalition, the website's just ffcoalition.com and got a pretty simple little, uh, you know, join uh, uh, button on that front page. And you can also kind of see some highlights from the conference that we just had last week and and um, and see a lot of the activity that we're doing either in Washington, D.C. Or, or state capitals from uh, coast to coast. So uh, it's always, uh, these are eventful days. You know, that old proverb, maybe may you live in interesting days. Well, uh, here we are. These are these are truly interesting and it's a great time to be, uh, be following Jesus and engaged in the process. Well, thank you very much. Best of luck in, in everything you do. And if you are a subscriber to the Tennessee Conservative or you just happened upon this interview and you like it, do go to TennesseeConservativeNews.com. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, and also, wherever you listen to podcasts, just type in Tennessee Conservative. Give us a five-star review. It really helps. Until next time, I'm Brandon Lewis signing off.